If you're a regular listener, you know we love our three spirit drinks. They are the non-alcoholic spirit drinks that are taking the world by storm. Three Spirit is a range of three distinct drinks, each with its own unique flavor and effect. The Livener is a refreshing and invigorating drink that is perfect for starting your day or night. The Social Elixir is a smooth and sophisticated drink that's perfect for sharing with friends. And the Nightcap is a calming and relaxing drink that's perfect for winding down before bed. All three drinks are made with plant-based ingredients and are free from alcohol, gluten, and sugar. They're also vegan and ethically sourced. So whether you're looking for a delicious and refreshing drink to enjoy on its own or a sophisticated non-alcoholic alternative to cocktails, Three Spirit is the perfect choice for you. Try Three Spirit today and discover the difference. Visit us.3spiritdrinks.com and use the promo code The Activity Continues for 15% off your entire order. Cheers! That one was the Fam, welcome to the season five premiere of The Activity Continues, a podcast where three friends and soul sisters discuss the TV show The Dead Files, and we talk about other creepy shit as well. We also sometimes interview people that are in the paranormal community as well as past Dead Files clients, and sometimes we even tell your stories. I'm Amy, and I'm here with my co host Megan, and the other Amy we call AP. Megan, I'll let you tell the people what we're doing today. All righty. Today we are going back to recapping the Dead Files episodes. <laughs> we will be talking about Darkness Rises. It's the first episode of season 11, and it originally aired July 11th, 2019. Also, please say hello to AP, who is going to tell you why we chose this one. Thanks, Megan. We chose this one because one of the clients has agreed to be interviewed on our show. So what? keep that in mind for a future episode. I know it's surprising to both Amy and Megan because it's not like Amy's been the one putting it all together. Right. <laughs> I just saw her in the Facebook group. I said, hey, if any clients want to be on our show, and she said, me, me, me. That's awesome. Yeah. And we're like, cool. OK, yeah. come on board. We're like, are you sure? Have you heard yeah. us? Because have we, you listened though? Yeah. Like really? Yeah. Because yeah, I mm-hmm. always tell people to listen to us first. Like don't right. get don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, take a listen, see you if could we vibe. Think we're super annoying. Yeah, it's possible you won't like us and you won't don't want any part of this. We but did have tell one of us those. if you don't like us. Yeah, <laughs> please don't tell us. Yeah, just make up know. something. Just yeah, say you say you sick. have to rearrange your sock drawer. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I have to wash <laughs> my hair that. tonight. Yeah, it gets messy in there. Uh, Especially well, when you get like those one socks that the one disappears doing laundry, but you oh, keep yeah. it. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, I'll find it someday. Yeah. I have a whole drawer of those. I do too. You have to go through the drawer every once in a while and do the matching. I do that. Yeah. No. Every once in a while, I'm like, <laughs> oh, look, here's a match. Here's a pair. No, that sounds like too much work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but then, then you have a brand new pair of socks. Exactly. Or you just go to the store and buy more when you run out of, <laughs> or you just or, wear mismatched. Or you just buy all black socks that are the same. That's and then true. it doesn't even matter. Then it doesn't matter. Nah, I like too much difference in my I socks. I like <laughs> I like the difference. fun, colorful socks. I have a lot of black ones too. But anyway, that was a <laughs> good tangent. We have 
derailed so far. Yeah. It's only Guys, that what, was not five, even 10 minutes. In. E- I was going to say not even <laughs> five minutes in. <laughs> so back to what we're doing. Yes. We will what also we be doing? reading Why a couple. Why did we pick this episode? <laughs> <laughs> she already Wait. got that part. Oh, I shit. got to that part. <laughs> I didn't get we? to the next stuff. <laughs> we'll also be reading a couple of listener stories this week. One from our, uh, one from one of our lovely patrons, and one from a Twitter follower who will, which I think it's X. It's, but it's X now. We can't say no. But I, I, I don't X, like Elon. Musk, formerly so I'm not known call as it Twitter. I, yeah. Why would you call? I'm sorry. Why would you take something fun and name it something? A not letter. fun. Stupid. I know. Because you're a dumb billionaire. Yep. Uh, anyways, uh, a formerly Twitter follower will also be joining us for a future episode to tell even more of her stories. Well, mm-hmm. And we do have a content warning for this episode. Mm-hmm. And there is child death in history yep. and child serial killer mm-hmm. uh, who was also a child themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A child... Uh, Serial killer child. and it's child child serial. <laughs> Wherever you put the comma, well, it makes just, sense. It, it all still put works. Put it in anywhere yeah, yep, you yep. want it. Or don't put it in at all. And right. yeah. live your life. Yeah. You're not gonna tell you what to do. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I uh, don't know if there's anything else necessarily in this episode as a content warning, but I'm sure check the show notes in case we mm-hmm. come up with something during the our our chat. Yeah, that's always a good idea. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention to the people that we are changing the format slightly and uh, we're not going to be doing a walkthrough like Amy started walking through the yard and saw blah, blah, blah. We're not going to piece Steve it apart like that. Yeah. Dig into the archives. Dig into the archives. Well, we might still do that. Dig into the archives. But... Well, we're still going to do that. <laughs> but Way to we're shit on do... that, Amy. I was trying to participate <laughs> and contribute. <laughs> And you're I like, mean, I didn't mean to shit on that. You're like, you fucking idiot. I didn't say that. I know you didn't. Your mouth um, didn't, but your eyes did. Uh, oh, you can't see my eyes. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a synopsis of like, here's where it here's where it takes place. Here are the clients, here's what they're experiencing, here's what Steve found, here's what Amy found, here's what Amy told them to do. Did they do it? Probably not. And the outcome. And then we're gonna pick apart the pieces that we mm-hmm. want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And so that's just a, I'll just do a short little synopsis in the beginning and then we'll start digging in further. That digging way, when the archives, somebody, digging through the archives, that way, when somebody r- listens to the beginning, they can be like, Oh, I haven't, I thought I'd seen this one, but I haven't seen this one yet. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to hear about it yet. So they'll know by what we say. Yep. Anyway. Anywho. And then um, let's see. Oh, I think, I think that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all she wrote. All right. Oh, I do want to say before we get started on Dead Fast Talk, um, we I watched the movie Genie that Amy mm-hmm. P mentioned uh-huh. um, at our in our last episode. If you guys didn't hear our last episode, it was our bonus ep- bonus holiday episode that uh, was out middle of December. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking like I'm in the future right now because it's actually only December sixth, December sixth, and it's not coming out until the fourteenth. But which is anyway. like World Short People Day, by the way. So oh, it is. Rec- it is. Yeah, I got it. Oh. I was yeah, on it's TikTok. because they all have to go back to Santa's, uh, the North Pole, because he needs them. <laughs> wow, I'm right here. I'm right here. Don't use your height. You you should see the memes we send my sister about short being short. You know what? I feel her pain. Your sister and I are gonna band together and we'll stack what on are you top of each do? other and we'll rise up to your level and we will poke <laughs> on you in each the other's eye. shoulders. Yeah, on each other's shoulders. <laughs> And boy, just you wait when that happens. You just because... think of like when you put the hand when people would put the hand out in the uh-huh, smaller. Yeah. I'm gonna oh, get yeah. you. I'm gonna you do it. just wait. You just wait. <laughs> Megan, how tall are you? Five three. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm shorter than you because I'm five two. See? Look at God, that. I'm a giant in this group. I'm shrinking wow. though, because I used to be five four. I was five four in college. And now I'm five two. Yes, your cartilage does tend to mm-hmm. I'm shrinking. Um, so I saw Jeannie. Okay. I thought it was delightful. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. loved every second of it. I love Melissa McCarthy anyway, but yeah, she is I love chef's her. kiss in this. I love that she's gotten away from, she was getting typecast as the super crude person yeah. all the mm-hmm. time. And it's like, mm-hmm. 
she does that well, but she does other things but so she's well. So like much this more one. talented yeah. than that. Yes. yes. And in this, she's just such a pure light, you know, she's mm-hmm. just a beautiful little human, but she's not human. She's oh, he genie. wasn't lying. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have to talk for a minute about something serious. Okay. Because I watched the Norwegian holiday last night. I was going to tell you, about, I was going to bring that up too. Yeah. And I stayed awake until 1130 because it was so fucking delightful. Mm -hmm. I fucking loved it. I would, I'm going to watch it again. Mm -hmm. There's jokes that I teared up a little bit. Yeah. I, oh my I, god! It's, that's what I loved about the Santa Summit, and Amy yes. you mentioned yeah. watching. I that looked one. for that, and I couldn't find it, and that's how I found the holiday, the Norwegian holiday. Okay, yeah. I was it, looking for it. I don't know I, when it's going to be on again, but I have. I'll, I'll give you my friendly login, okay. and you can watch it because I have it on my friendly app. I was I I was like toggling back between Peacock, between <laughs> um, friendly. I even looked at Hallmark. Like I was trying to find it, and then I just stumbled on. The Norwegian mm-hmm. holiday and fell in love. I'm, I, I'm going to look for that mm-hmm. one to record because that was one I've been watching for because I I saw like when they're sitting around the table and they're like, Americans are funny because you have yes. only one word for love. Uh-huh. Yeah. But in Norway, gr- we have several. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, three. But like There's you three. look around the table and <clears throat> they're normal looking people. Yeah. Like what they're not like they're not like looking like they just got cut out of a GQ magazine. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And I, I see what you mean. enjoy that so much. Yeah. They talk about Taylor Swift. The dad's yep. a Swifty. <laughs> yes. oh, that was a that. really cute scene. It yeah. was so I, cute. I, I just started watching it this evening, this afternoon. And so I am only like just a little past that scene. I have mm-hmm. not seen the whole mm-hmm. thing yet. I'll finish it tomorrow morning. But yep. I, I loved give it, it too. a million hot chocolates. I give I, it with whipped cream. And I tried to write <laughs> Kahlua, but I couldn't spell it. And so oh, it's a hard I one. I never out, know where that H goes. Yes. But um, yes, it's adorable. And the the boy, the guy in it, 100. I'm like, I know he's so cute. I was I like, where have I seen this guy before? So I looked him up on the Hallmark app. He was in Ted Lasso. Ah, oh, okay. Really? Moss in Ted Lasso. So I the, think he looks exactly like Chris Hemsworth. Oh, he does look like a Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah he I does. can see that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it very was cute. so cute. I, very I cute. look forward to watching that one. I know you're going to um, love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Find find the Santa Summit. That one. I, also yeah. was yes, that's on my list because for tonight. What what and we talked about it was like all of a sudden some of the some of the writing is getting different than the past. And Smarter. Like there's, they're saying yes. things that people actually say like yes. at one point it, there's two brothers in it at one point the one brother goes well man I love you and the other one goes I'm fond of you like <laughs> it's like people say we, I, right. we say that all the time like I say to my dogs like I kind of like you like yeah, you're all right you're it's, fine it's getting more colloquial and not so proper Look yeah like throwing in big words like that, that. Oh. you guys and I even had a shit days so <laughs> I know that's why I'm so proud of you but yeah it, it is like I literally am telling everybody but, I've ever met about it I think it's so cute <laughs> it I love really cute I, I loved in the Santa summit though um the one is like they wrote a cynic as like as a real person and not mm-hmm. just like eh, I hate Christmas because no. yeah eh, 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 eh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's one okay. point where she's sitting at the bar and the guy she's talking to says something. She's like, I am trying so hard not to roll my eyes to the back of my head. And I'm like, I have said that. I have said that hey, out loud. Me. I was like, I'm really, so, I get yeah. to this. Yes, yeah. I'm the Santa Summit, the Santa Summit is on my list. And that's how I found the Norwegian holiday. And yeah. I yeah. just loved it. I was yeah. exhausted. And but they I nerded out have people. To stay up in the right way by like super Good. loving LOTR. So it was just, Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. Instead of, in, yeah. For those they, of you who don't know, that's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. If you're not a nerd, that's Lord of yeah. the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. I right. thought that was cute. Even quoting to... Lord of the Rings. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Quoting it. Nice. In the movie. Oh, I also watched the family switch. It was okay. It was cute. Yeah, it's cute. The, the dog thing was funny. <laughs> that was funny. That dog, that little, and the dog's name was Pickles. Yep. The dog Aww. walking around on his hind feet because it was actually the baby he's in his toddler. body. Yeah. But yeah. the 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 neighbor who watches them. Yes. He was funny. It just, you know, it's not it's not earth shattering. It's not going to win no. awards. Yeah. But no, it's, it's entertaining. Silly. 
It's, it's entertaining. That's but what Hallmark it gets you enough are. that it has that massive cringe factor too, where you're like, I can't watch. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Like if you're a person like me and you're just like, I oh, can't. secondhand I, embarrassment. Oh yeah. my God. Oh yeah. I was just like bawling my hands yeah. up and just like, I can't watch. I can't do this. Yeah. But to me, I like that's also amusing and that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it was cute. All okay, right. Sorry, I suppose I we should get into what we're here for, huh? Yeah. Okay. What the people want. Let's go to death what the now. People want. Okay, here's the synopsis. So this episode takes place in Tonawanda, New York. The clients are mother and daughter Carrie and Kaylee. There's also Carrie's husband Tom and Kaylee's daughter Bella, who's three and a half. They have been experiencing things moving, hearing voices, shadow figures, physical attacks, scratches, feelings of being watched, apparitions, knocking, mimics, and health issues. And Carrie, that's the mom, is afraid that it will kill her and move on to her granddaughter, Bella. Steve uncovered several deaths in the house, the story of the former property owners, and one child serial killer story in the area. Amy sees most of these spirits uh, of the people that Steve has uncovered, but most disturbing is a little boy who's the little boy spirit who is messing with Bella. This is what she has drawn for the sketch. And at the reveal, she tells them to find a Reiki master who's also a psychic. Bella needs to have cords removed from the, the entity, and the Reiki master will also cleanse the house of all the negative energy and move all the spirits out of the house, and then Bella will be safe. She also suggests doing a grounding meditation once a week. And then the follow-up a month later is that someone named Claire came in and cleansed the house, and all is good. And the I way that the first Carrie talks sleep. about um, Claire it makes me think that that was something someone they talked about. Yeah. Or because she says it like, and Claire came in with like yeah. no other lead in. So I feel like that's probably somebody that Amy recommended yep. to them or something. Mm-hmm. That, that was that, in yeah. the time before things got severely backed up with the pandemic too. Right. Yeah. Right. Because yep. this would have, this was... 2019. Mid 2019 when it was released. When it was aired. So, so yeah. they shot it in 2018. Right. They shot in 2018. And like I was telling, I told these guys already this, but um, before we started, but when I was doing some research on this child serial killer, I found an article in newspapers.com, the article that Steve had in, in the show. And it's really interesting. I put a link to it in the mm. uh, show notes, but uh, it was pinned in newspapers.com by Painless TV mm-hmm. in October, uh, October 16th, 2018. So that tells me that's when they were doing the research mm-hmm. you know, for that area was in October. So about nine months between doing the research and it being on the like air. Airing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Amy, do you ever when you're going back and watching stuff or listening, do you ever catch things that we do that you miss when we're talking about it and you make yeah. and it makes you laugh? Okay, good. Because I just did one that I think you'll find. Oh, you did? So. <laughs> well, a lot of times, too, like if I have to get up and go do something, I take my headphones off and then you two still talk. Mm-hmm. Or before Amy would join, um, Megan would just sing. Sing. Mm-hmm. And then yep. I'd get back on it. She'd stop right away. And then I'd be like, what? She's like, nothing. And then as I'm <laughs> editing, I'm like, oh, my God, that's what she was doing. Uh-huh. Usually singing about what Amy was doing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm making a drink and blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> And my mother is calling. No. Hi, Barbara. The dogs out. Hey, Barb. She's probably uh, like, where's my candy? She texted me earlier and she goes, I could use some things from uh, Instacart. And I'm like, oh, yeah, really? And she goes, yeah, I need. Um, oh, what did she? Oh, dish soap mm-hmm. and and uh, a pizza and ice cream with strawberries. <laughs> At least she threw some fruit in there. I know. Well, I think it's probably ice cream that has strawberries in it. Yeah. You know? Amy, Amy? I know. I'm just it's it's got something. I'd like true. to give her that benefit of the doubt, but I don't think that's about it. Yeah. So I'll call her when we're done. Okay. So so a couple what things do we want that, to talk about? Yeah. Well, I thought uh one, I wanted to just call out that Amy's hat she was wearing throughout the walk yeah. made like gave off fortune teller vibes. Yeah. Like, yeah, it like did. sitting down and having like the the mm-hmm. yeah, it just was she needed some almost, dangly earrings yes. and yeah. like yeah. really long red nails. Yes. yes. But um, the other thing I thought was really interesting was really a, the history of the house mm-hmm. because it had been in one family previously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, we kind of get that Amy connects to all of the previous dead owners mm-hmm. um, that died in the house. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there were three three people that died in the house. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, wonder if the because the woman who so we had, I think it was was it Ida. Ida was the yeah. one who died in 1998. No, that was no. Um, oh, that, Verna. that was the older one. That was Verna. That was Verna. 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 That's right. So Verna, um, she died in, in like February of 1998, and this family moved in in 1998. So Carrie mm-hmm. and her family have been in there for 20 years 25 at this point. Years, yeah. <clears throat> well, at the time of the episode, yeah, 20 uh, years, was yeah, 20, about yeah. 20 years. Yeah, but it makes you wonder because you know they talk about. It, and, you know, kind of hits home when I think about like with my grandparents and stuff, too, is like Verna didn't know how, <clears throat> how to live without her husband and mm-hmm. but insisted on living alone, mm-hmm. insisted on living in the house that I think his father built in 1916 and his father died in 1952 and they moved into the house in 1952. So Verna and her husband moved into the house in 1952 and um or maybe it was his parents i can't remember whose parents it was it was his i remember him saying my maternal grandmother okay so it was verna's parents yep that um that it was henry henry driscoll was and ida yeah yeah, henry and ida although i looked at that obituary for henry that steve was holding i paused it and read it and it said his wife's name was mary Mary but that's Glenn. because it wasn't Ida the one who died and, you know, having 14 kids. She died in the 14th childbirth. Uh, and then he that was a different that person. Was, that was William Williams. Yeah, that was oh, William Williams and his okay. wife, Sophia. Oh. Ida so died I in 1938. Also, yep. who names their kid William Williams? I know. I know. Really I, lazy. I literally wrote behind it. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. it's really lazy. Lazy. And I don't care that it was 1786 <laughs> or whatever it was. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Ida, I mean, her her first name may have been Mary. Mary was so common. Maybe she yeah. went by a middle name. And mm-hmm. Ida is just how everybody knew her. Yeah, it could be. Or I like mean, my grandma was Mary and she was like Mary the second. Or yeah, yeah, that could do. be. My grandma's right. name was Olga, but nobody called her that. Everybody called her Peggy. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Um, do they ever do girls names the second you know how there's like John the second. Yeah, John don't you third. remember Paula and Paula, Paula the second? Paula Jr. No, they called her Paula Jr. They didn't call her Paula the second. That's true. Well, for the most part, though, it's it. You have senior, junior, and then the third gets the technically the third. Yeah, true. But unless you're looking at monarchs, and then you'd have. Oh yeah, we do. And not Queen the butterflies. Elizabeth the second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right. Yep. And that's you know first of their name, mm-hmm. you know second of their name, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. But yeah, going back to the the house, I just I thought it was really interesting. Amy connected to somebody who was newly dead, who died in the last 20 years. And mm-hmm. then but she also connected to another lady who had been dead longer. And she talked about their hair colors, mm-hmm. one having brown curly hair, one being more gray hair. And then um, a sh- guy she kept calling the trucker, mm-hmm. 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 the dead guy who was a trucker. He died around here. Uh, and but the nasty thing took his voice. The nasty thing in the upstairs hallway. Yeah, yeah, the, which the, would the have entity. been his daughter, right? Because wasn't the trucker Henry, her? Yes, Verna's da- father. Yes, but the nasty thing that was in the hallway was something that a previous owner of the property Had... brought, and that oh, was... that was not that was the thing that was bothering the little girl. <laughs> yeah, yes. that was looking like the boy, and I got that okay. that was never human. That wasn't a human entity. It was just portraying itself. Like yes, the little it was. Boy. It was okay. shape shifting okay. to what it needed. Yeah. But it was um, William. I think it was William Williams. <laughs> likely is what it was connect. It seemed like they were connecting yeah. to is that potentially he's the one who brought it there. Yeah. And then it's been affecting things in that area. Um, and speaking of in the William Williams, when he married the rich spinster daughter the spinster the spinster, the spinster daughter that, yeah. that's just a way to describe women that people are like are over 22 they're, in, they're independent no, over like <laughs> they don't 18. have children they don't have children <laughs> they're probably they're gay. unmarried because they're, they're, they're gonna they're die alone wrong with them yeah yeah, yeah. spinster yep I, and then actually, his... i think there's a different classification for my, me now <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think a lot of times the spinsters were um, gay. Yeah. Mm. But I, it was anybody who was yeah. considered 
childless, unwed, mm-hmm. and there was something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was either that or it was by the old age having, of 21. Having independence okay. and having <laughs> and having opinions. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thoughts. So, the thoughts. worst. That's, that's not where, that's where I call it. Thoughts. In. Oh God. No, God, no. Yeah. Don't have thoughts. But well, and <clears throat> poor William Williams, his passing. When he went to go meet his wife in Rome, she went to Rome, New York, which is where one of our other episodes we covered was in mm-hmm. Rome, New York. Um, he went to go meet her and was on a stagecoach and the stage stagecoach tipped over and he bonked his mm-hmm. head and had a brain injury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the guy said he died penniless, penniless and alone. And alone. <laughs> penniless and yeah, alone. Well, penniless. But there seems also, to um, I just a lot missing to... from that story. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to be said that the story does not say he bonked his head. That was an Amy. Yeah, that was me. That he, was Amy. He hit his head, or he. It Dude, rolled, oh my went, guy bonked his head. Bonk, bonk on his... head. Yep. What was he boozing? It, the sta- <laughs> yeah, stagecoach tipped over, and he had a TBI, so he yep. survived for a little while after that. But his, well, I mean, mental capacity had, was never the same. So his That's first right. wife. That's exactly what he said. His yep. first wife was had fourteen kids, but and. Then they're like, oh, so tragic. Only seven survived. Yes, it is. But also at the time, the fact that seven survived is yeah. probably pretty is, And she died in childbirth. And she died in childbirth. With the 14th one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. At the age of 40. At the age of 40. Which is, which is really back old. Then. That's really old back then. To be not even old. Well, period, but old to be having kids. Yeah. It's that's actually a misnomer. Like it, ages lasted. They did go a little bit longer than you. You weren't you weren't a grandmother at 40. Like you, people still lived longer than that, but the death, the, the death age was smaller because there was so much disease mm. and everything that took so many kids in chi- in young ages. Oh, so the average age the is average smaller. Age. Oh, okay. So the average age made it look like people lived a lower amount of time, but they often lived into their sixties and seventies from what they can see throughout history. So there's just this yeah. like aspect that we were all taught that nobody lived a long time. Well, some didn't, mm-hmm. a good yeah. chunk didn't. So it did drop Skew down the, the results. Yeah. Yeah. So there wasn't a ton of people living to a hundred that would pull the results the other direction. Yeah. So fun fact. The point is she was old to have kids. She was old to have kids. Any yes. time. Well, I yes. guess not now, but back then. Yeah. Back then, for sure. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. But yeah. And then um, he marries a billionaire's daughter or basically a billionaire, but like super rich guy's daughter. And obviously this guy doesn't like him. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it it seems like because she well, was probably because Finster to take care of the kids, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm sure the father-in-law didn't like him because he's bailing him out of his business. Yeah. And this spinster daughter's only marriage option is this quote unquote loser. Mm-hmm. His business but, was doing OK when they got married. But the year after they got married, it went. Yeah. So I wonder what happened. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe she spent all his money or he was a gambler. Probably. That's yeah. only or the only logical explanation is it's paranormal. <laughs> paranormal. Oh, that's right. Took it, that's right. So. They just I didn't have know why Stephen they Amy. Were speculating about it. I don't. You're right. Yep. You're right. The yeah. waste of our time. And That's and right. speaking of the the thing and that she drew, I hated that picture because that face on that child. Yes. Was the smile? Yes. Oh. That was very creepy. No, that was awful. Oh, uh, let's see. It what was like I... looking right at me. Yeah. <laughs> I said that yeah. face is horrifying. Yeah. Because it was like, it it, it was like a a. a a doll face, honestly, mm-hmm. and I hate dolls, but mm-hmm. it just lo- the way that it looked, it was like a, a, a I don't know. It, I just didn't like it, like a regular man <laughs> doll. Yeah. It, yeah. I have funny I don't eyes. Know how much they, like, clearer cross? you could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was creepy. That was a creepy. It was awful. It was awful. And the I noticed in the thing sketch. Was the smile to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I noticed in the sketch scene um, when he, they, the artist draws it and shows it to Amy and she goes, can you make the bed bigger? Mm-hmm. Like, so, you know, we were seeing more of that back and forth, not just yeah. the, uh, r- it is what I saw. Yep. Yes. That is what I saw. Thank yeah, you I think for that's, drawing this. That's when I, I, Amy, I don't remember if it was just to you or if it was you and Megan, but it was like, they did Amy dirty in the yeah. season because they really made her look much more robotic or much yeah. more like 
obviously we know that they filmed this after she or they edited after she was yeah. leaving or had left. Oh God, yeah, yeah, and they they just made it look like she didn't care at times, mm-hmm. which I don't mm-hmm. think is accurate. Not at all I true. Not at all. It, she wouldn't that... do this for fi- fourteen years. And she then cared. Be like, fuck all. Yeah. yeah, she cared. Fuck all more than anybody else in that. Anybody else on in that, that show did, show. which is. What Which is she why she left. <laughs> stated in a recent post that she had yep. on her TikTok and shared on Instagram is yep. that mm-hmm. she got kind of tired of being one of the ones that cared so mm-hmm. much and not being able to help everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind and, of feel awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amy, we want you to come on and tell your side of the story. We love you so much. Please come on our show. Mm-hmm. Or just come and hang out. Like, you don't ha- even have to talk about all that. True. Can't. True. True. I but mean, I we'll want to become best friends. It's right. fine. Talk Megan about... will change her name to Amy as well. Yeah. We could just be all Amy's. I've got the paperwork filled out already. All I need <laughs> just to, need do to is be mail signed. It in. I, I know just I need a it. stamp. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I would love to have her come on and talk about all the things she wants to do, like mm-hmm. her store and yes. her classes and all of that stuff. I yeah. think because I know people would love to do that, you know, yeah. Yeah. take classes from her and stuff. But anyway, and just well, no, like, talk Should to her. We... Should yeah. we jump into the uh, serial killer? Yeah, let's do it. Great. Because it is hot cocoa season after oh, all. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and now it's ruined. For No, it's not. I'm still going <laughs> to drink it. But yeah. Still going to drink it. Just not I, with rat poison in it. Damn it. Yeah. Well, and it, it's kind of one of those interesting things. It's like, okay, I wish we, of course, women rarely got any information in history about anything so we don't know much about this girl either like what was her home life like what was Mm -hmm. you know obviously there was something disconnected or something that she saw in earlier in life that she was trying to recreate or Mm -hmm. something yeah she was a 14 year old who you know we start off hearing about on july 8th 1892 i had to go back and rewind i was like was that 1892 or 1982 um (laughs) And two-year-old, uh, Lu- Luena. It was Luisa. It's they in the ca- the closed caption said really? Luena, L O W E N A. Yeah, that's, that's wrong. Because yeah. okay. I looked it up and her name was Luisa Sturmer. Sturmer. Yep. Her name is Luisa Sturmer. Yeah, because I they, thought that's what the article. And and she was presenting with what they thought was cholera. Cholera was very common back in the day. Fun fact. Adding chlorine to water in the early 1900s saved more lives throughout in that time since then than all previous history of humans. Wow. Yep. So. Chlorine. Yeah. Hmm. Just that little bit killing off, killing off disease. Yeah. You know, instead of, you know, drinking swamp water. Yeah. Or bleach. thought she had cholera and, uh, but then other kids started getting sick, but only, only two year olds, uh, Ella died or three Luisa. died. so oh Luisa. yeah sorry Louisa Ella was the 14 year old who wanted to see a pretty corpse mm-hmm. and she would look, like sneak out and peer in windows of the sick kids. she would yep she mm-hmm. would go and peer in the window um and then it says you know like they didn't they didn't send her to prison. They sent her to a reformery. It was a like reform- a hospital yeah. kind of thing because they were like, obviously something's wrong with her. And then mm-hmm. it said that she went on to live a normal life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She didn't stay in the hospital very long. No, no. And didn't have other incidences or something. So mm-hmm. then it also makes you wonder, like, was her age not like, was she not aligned with her age kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, maybe. like maybe she was. Had some mental know, slow is dis- not the right word, but no, you know. like yeah, was she developmentally or, delayed? Yeah. Was she was yeah. she delayed at you That's know as being a fourteen year old who at that time would be heavily into potentially in a workforce or that sort of thing? Mm-hmm. Was she more in that age and not grasping that concept of what it actually means if there's a pretty corpse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and why would a fourteen year old? want to see a pretty corpse i mean that unless she right. was told that or heard that something, somewhere something triggered something that doesn't well, just come out of nowhere maybe she was really right. into edgar Allan poe so, were those stories written by then i don't know you guys i'm only in english all right i'm on it i don't remember when those they were old they're old stories it could be um well i read the article and mm-hmm. i was 
I'm a little dubious still. Ooh. Um, because look at us in our good words tonight. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, he he was alive from 1809 to 1849. Okay, so oh. totally. Yep. So yeah, that's totally probably what it this. was. Yeah. Um, but the I'll, you guys can read the article, but it's it's <clears throat> it said like, oh, she her mother reports that she would come home and say weird things about death and wanting to mm-hmm. be see dead things. But then in the same article, it says the mother was shocked by this behavior because she never talked like that before. <laughs> and I'm like, well, which one is it? Which one is it? And one you know, of these things is not right, like the like other. The other. <laughs> one of these things <laughs> just, just doesn't, doesn't belong. belong. And she, um, when she was being questioned, she said she didn't do it. And then it sounded like the more they questioned her, then she was, was like, oh, OK, I guess I did it. And then yeah. confessed. And so then I start thinking, was she coerced mm-hmm. into confessing? Was she a vulnerable child whose right. mind wasn't as clear? Uh, let's look back at the Stephen Avery case and yeah. that poor mm-hmm. young, younger boy that was yes. railroaded into mm-hmm because his IQ was like seven and yeah. he admitted everything. Cause he's like, well, I don't know. I guess if you say I did it, I guess I did. Mm-hmm. And I'm worried that I'm wondering if that's what happened to her. Maybe. Well, and, and that's, I mean, they had the kid, the kids that survived said that she gave them cocoa, but that's did true. she, did she mix it? Yeah. Or was it her mother? Yeah. Well, and the or article also, else. the article also said that she, um, to the one that sh- that actually died, she gave her the rat poison in water. But the mm. other kids, she gave it to them in cocoa and they didn't want to drink it. And so she held them down and poured it down their throats. Mm. Hmm. But who knows if did the kids really say that or did the cops just say the kids said that? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I just I can't I can't trust anything anymore. Yeah. Well, and especially from reporting then. And I mean, there's still uh, it's not like there's a ton of news all the right. time and the right. fascination yeah. with all of that sort of stuff. But that's the interesting thing that, you know, again, that she didn't get charged with murder. She went right. to a reformery. She went to like. And uh, then you lived know. her life. Did mm-hmm. you guys just hear a weird. Yes, yelp? I did from Megan's. Oh, oh, it might have been Jordan. I it heard, sounded like a screech. It like shocked me. I thought it was just. Oh, a I line. saw your face do that. I, I saw I heard it come from Megan's like it. uh like her speaker just went really high all of a sudden. Oh, weird. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. Weird. Uh, at least I know where it is. I'll go back and listen. I can mm-hmm. see which track it's on. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So it wasn't a lot of news. And yeah. And even the article even said there's not a lot of news. And so this is, you know, hard to get all the stories straight and everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I'll, I'll send you guys a link to the article. It's yeah bizarre. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. No punishment. I did this story have anything to do with the house or the episode? No, really? I think they tied it in because it had a child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it happened 200 yards from the property. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't an think there of a were, mile, but I didn't think like, there were anything like any spirits or anything that were tied to the story. No, Amy think- did say she saw three dead baby spirits, mm. but. And there were three kids that were poisoned. Yes. But they didn't die. The other two didn't no, die. So only Louisa died. Yeah. So I wonder if maybe she was seeing some of the children of the the 14 children where the seven of them died. Maybe she was seeing oh, some of them. Yeah. Or if maybe part of them didn't, you know, like maybe part oh, of their soul fractured. died or something like that. Because or they were could they maybe have, death. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that or residual yep. from that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Because she did see another residual, the, the lady on the stairs. Yeah, the yes. lady on the stairs, which was Kelly being pushed. Carrie. Yeah. Carrie. Carrie yeah. No, Carrie. Carrie. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> yeah. I, overall, you know, but one thing I liked about this episode, too, is, again, there was attempts to try and figure things out. There was mm-hmm. photo evidence, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, whether you want to believe what everybody, you know, what's there or not. At least they're showing something unlike our favorite forgotten episode <laughs> where there was heavy, no tears and no evidence of anything other than all the her writing on the wall. But yeah, which she didn't do. I, it's not my writing. 
That's not my handy black out all the time. Yeah, but I do black out and I do do witchcraft. So there's that. Yeah. I just thought it was, what did she call it? Kitchen witchcraft? Oh, yeah. Kitchen, yeah. Yep, I, that was protection what she spells. It. I just it was something remember. like that. It kitchen, was kitchen magic, kitchen or something spells, like kitchen that. magic. Yeah. That's yep. it. Anyways, that's a story for a different day. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday we'll get over. Someday, we'll, we'll get back someday. to that episode. I don't know if we can. We can just keep referencing it because it just gets us all <laughs> amped up every single time because we're all like, we know there are other people that actually needed help, yeah. but this yeah. just felt like such a, a like plug. Here's my father's book. He wrote about me be- when I was possessed. It, it went one through time. an extruder. Yeah. Like, it's just like it was being forced upon us. Yeah. And we were all like, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. I think that the uh, production company had thrown in the towel by then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, for to be sure. honest. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, I. but overall, I. Uh, it's interesting. And I'm glad that they followed advice and were able to do yes. something. Yes. Um, but did we find out was... Carrie's significant other still there because she said Bella sleeps in our room. So then mm. I was like, "Well, I think Haley he was sleeping because in the room. Tom, when her they husband, asked Tom, okay. yeah, he was in the picture of the family who lived here. Okay, yeah, yeah, she mm-hmm. said it's my husband, myself. He was not interviewed though. No, um, not at all. But I will yep. say, oh my god, when he, when Steve interviewed Bella, oh I, my god, is she, she the was, cutest thing? Oh in the world? my god. Oh, she was not. She didn't take her eyes off of where the closet was. No, yeah. she didn't. So she he was, was there, dead. looking over that, her shoulder the whole time. Mm-hmm. I and even feeling, like, yeah, yeah. She was. She would respond to Steve and like look at him, but then she would turn her. It, mm-hmm. I didn't get the. I mean, I'm I'm sure she's shy, but I got more that she was keeping an eye on the closet yep. than yep. she was scared for of sure. talking to Steve. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yes. And then, um, um. Oh yeah. And Amy got confused at one point about male energy or female energy in the mm-hmm. downstairs bedroom. Yeah. And now it made sense at the end because the room that Kaylee was in, her brother had vacated prior mm-hmm. to her coming in, but he said he left because of all of the issues he was having there. Yes. He said mostly because of, and I thought that was really interesting because Steve goes, well, you left because of the issues. And he goes, yes, mostly because of the issues. Oh, so Maybe there yeah. were other issues. Yeah. I just thought that was about. interesting. But yeah, I thought it w- I also found it interesting that Tom didn't get interviewed. Maybe or- he didn't want to. Maybe he wasn't having any experiences. Yeah, maybe. Well, we can we- ask. We can ask Kaylee. Kaylee. When yeah. we talk to her. I, and, I mean, going back to the brother, maybe it was that Kaylee and Bella needed a place. And yeah. he yeah. had the opportunity to have a place that or a friend had somewhere mm-hmm. that he could move into or something. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed, I mean, he seemed super nice. Like, yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't get any. And any Amy said she him. thought that he and Kay- Kaylee both were sensitive. Were sensitive. Yep. And Carrie yep. was like, yeah, I believe it. So, yeah. yep. Because he was feeling all that energy being drained yep. from mm-hmm. him. Like, he would be there for just three hours and then he'd go home yep. back to his other place. And he said he'd feel like really fatigued and like it was, it was hard to walk and all of that. So, he was being physically well, drained. And Mm -hmm. Carrie opening it up, you know, we've talked about medical issues with, Mm -hmm. you know, potential paranormal connection and heart attack, (laughs) epilepsy. I mean, hers was epilepsy. Yeah. That's, you know, brain and you think Mm -hmm. like electricity in your body Mm -hmm. sort of thing. And you think like to me, I was like, well, we we hear that, you know, spirits play with electrical aspects that. Yeah. Right. That seems like the only. Yeah. The only. I think it might have been exemplified, not exacerbated by the spirits, but she did mm-hmm. say she'd had it since she was four. Yes. Oh, yeah. I but know. she said the last four years have gotten worse. It's been worse. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. that's where. And then it's like, OK, what what happened? It is interesting because they were there for 20 years at the time of that. Recording. Yeah, so, so what, what happened? Nothing happened for the first 16 years. That's not the right match. No, she okay. said stuff was always mm-hmm. happening, but yeah, it's she said- within the last couple of months when um, Kaylee and Bella moved in mm-hmm. that it really amped up. But, but it must have actually happened before that because they had to have. They, there's no way they called the dead files and dead files was there within two months. Yeah, it usually takes about a year in that process. So oh. they had to have called the dead files long before Kaylee mm-hmm. moved in. Mm-hmm. 
So it yeah, could have been stuff that was ha- like when they were staying there mm-hmm. or overnight or. Yeah. But, you know, then but she did say the last four years, a couple of times about her yeah. epilepsy yeah. Yep. being more severe. And then I'm like, OK, wait, Bella is around three and a half, four. Did, is that a big change that mm-hmm. made a connection? Because that entity, that that negative energy maybe started. You know, picking up on her. Picking up on mm-hmm. on that, mm-hmm. even if Kaylee wasn't living in the house, but that energy. Because I'm it's sure just she like, was probably visiting. Oh, and, sure. Yeah. And here's here's where I can. An innocent plug in. And not, yeah. you know, tainted by life. <laughs> Again, I'm just trying to find a like what what could have happened? What yeah. was going on? I have it'll no be, idea. It's all speculation. It'll be interesting. Yeah. It's all it'll paranormal. be interesting to talk to her and find out if, if she knows anything more about that. I, I have to say that I love that um, Amy said that Bella is a little tiny supernova. Yes. Supernova. I know. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And that yeah, the, just, the yeah. being is really in, attracted to that. Mm. And that's it's incredibly dangerous for her. So, yeah, it, it could just be that once Bella you know, came to stay there, got even worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or even when she was born, she was born four years before that. Right. right? Yeah. Somewhere so, in that time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway. Well, again, good episode. Yeah, it was, it was I, a good episode. Yeah, it was good. Sometimes... Those with a strong attachment to a specific place during their lifetime choose to stick around, reliving moments or specific events that took place there. It all comes back to the history that was left behind. That history leaves an impression. This is the Haunted Happy Hour podcast, a show dedicated to to uncorking chilling conversations about the paranormal. We're your hosts, Lily and Vanessa. We dig through the history of locations to get an understanding of why certain places are considered to be haunted, what happened there, and why. We seek to understand the reasons for encountering some sort of paranormal manifestations in certain locations while sharing our own experiences took some shots Mm -hmm. everything was great but then when i looked the second time i was already down to seven percent i had like 50 some oh my god join us in our haunted lounge as we share stories about the history hauntings and lore throughout our hometowns across the midwest and beyond for those looking to find out what spooky tales lie trapped within some of america's cities and towns Join us for the next Haunted Happy Hour. We'll talk spirits, drink spirits, and sometimes even encounter spirits. I could definitely taste the the vanilla. Honestly, it's not as strong as what it smells like. I give this one two thumbs up. Okay, now that we're enjoying our drink, though, let's go ahead and talk about the stories. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you have Echo devices, an easy way to listen is just say, Alexa, play Haunted Happy Hour podcast. So we invite you to sit back, grab a cocktail, and let us introduce you to some history, mayhem, hauntings, and spirits right here on the Haunted Happy Hour podcast. Cheers. Okay, should we read the stories? Yeah. Yeah. All right. One of them is very long. So whoever has more energy can read that one. The paranormal encounter is the longer one. I got that. And then the other one is Liz. Liz's story. Lynn. Lynn. This is it's Lynn and Liz. They're a couple, but Lynn's the one that wrote it. Ooh, it, it is long. I'll do. I will do my best not to get lost, ladies. <laughs> Just make okay. it real, like zoom in. Oh my god, that what? face! What oh, the? I know she put pictures in there too. Oh, yeah, I was not prepared for that. I was not prepared when I opened that document <laughs> for the skeleton. Skeleton. It's eyes. A, it's a really scary story. <laughs> 
great. So we'll do this one first. And then the other one is, is not as scary. Okay, so it's- my paranormal encounter by T Lynn Shapiro. All right, here we go, everyone. Although I have survived many other paranormal events that have occurred to me in my lifetime, there's one that has terrified me most. It has, it has remained at the core of my experiences and is the only one I cannot get past. I've lived with this for 60 years. Holy shit. Yeah. But by the way, I'm blind reading this. I have not read it. So here we go. <laughs> it's lived with it. I've lived with this for 60 years and it hasn't lost its grip on my memory. Describing this encounter heightens a mixture of emotions, anxiety, sorrow, and even anger. Oof. Please forgive me if my story seems to ramble. Girl, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> but I have never written have about my paranormal encounter mm-hmm. ever. If something so evil can appear, I'm getting goosebumps. Uh, great. And I'm in the dark. I love this for me. <laughs> you guys, something- I texted them last night and I started watching the episode and I was like, I can't, I'm getting scared. So I had to turn on a Hallmark movie. <laughs> if something so evil can appear to such an innocent mind, what else is it capable of? Who else had suffered its torture before me? This malevolent being violated every sense of my childhood. And that truly angers me. Does oh it still God. frighten me now? Yes. I'm frightened. This was not a ghost as some might normally imagine, though I've encountered several spectral beings and they were always truly unsettling. This was a demonic entity, a demon in every sense of the word. Not the D word. Yeah, it sounds like it's got big demon energy here. Uh Uh-huh. If this infernal creature was powerful enough to exist beyond life as we know it, and it was able to step beyond the veil of reality, then its boundaries are limitless. Nothing can prevent it from ever from visiting me again. Oh, hi, West. Uh oh, he's going to jump in my lap, you guys. I'm also good. fearful that by telling this story, it will solidify its evil existence forever. And now I'm going to get haunted. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I do. I not, read it too. I do so. not allow anything. Yeah. Only positive no. energy to any, any of our homes and anyone yeah. listening. Only positive energy is only welcome. positive. Yep. I'm uncomfortable about giving this thing any more power over my life. All right, Lynn, I love your courage. Or Tony, (laughs) I love your courage. Yeah. I was born October 13th. Woo, woo, October. October, baby. October, baby. The youngest of two daughters, five years apart. We lived in the house of my first encounter from my birth up until 1971. This terrifying experience had left me with so many questions back then, and it still does after all these years. As a child, I reasoned that this was a fact of my life. Of life. My life. I should expect this kind of thing to happen again. And I lived in fear that it would in every way. And oh in a God. way, my reasoning wasn't far off because the first encounter was the catalyst of future events. Let's go back to 1964. I can recall oh, every detail of that forsaken home, the address, its construction, every room, every corner, and the way it stood out from the other houses in appearance. The entry door and interior doors were fit- fitted with skeleton locks and keys, and each mm. door had a crystal knob. The house had to be at least a hundred years, hundred when we occupied it. It was likely wow. built on farmland before the city was established and long before it, the other surrounding houses were built. The entrance to our community was also the exit and only accessible from the main road. We shared a common address with each individual house numbered alphabetically, but haphazardly marked. Six of these houses had the appeal of newly built cottages with plaster exterior and an attached garage. But we had tar paper shingles that were more suited for a roof than exterior walls. And the garage was a separate structure with barn doors. Another contrasting feature was on our house. Our house was on a raised foundation with a cement porch stretching from end to end and rough wood railing. None of the other houses were built on a raised foundation and none of the others had a front porch. Mentioning the porch has significant meaning to my story, but I'll get to it later. The awful exterior was... (laughs) <laughs> it was a stark contrast to the interior, which was nice and cozy. The large family room was adorned with a huge fireplace that nearly occupied an entire wall. From the dining room, our mother's bedroom was first door on the right, and grandma's was in the north end of the house. With a shared bathroom between the two rooms, it was a Jack and Jill design. My sister kept her things in grandma's room, and I kept mine in mother's room. Mom assigned me a cabinet in her bedroom where I keep my kept my reading books, coloring books, and crayons, and had a pair of dull-edged scissors. 
At the end of each day, all of my supplies were placed back, back into the cat. I can see where this is going. Back into the cabinet for the night. I have never deviated from this practice. My sister and I took turns sleeping with either our mother or grandmother. This night, I slept with our mother. For those who've experienced a paranormal encounter, you'll agree that even before you've seen anything, you feel it. Mm -hmm. The whole atmosphere changes. It is an undeniable feeling that you get when someone or rather something is watching you. A prickly sensation might start at the back of your neck and quickly race up your spine, raising the hairs on your arms. Perhaps you were awoken, but hadn't mustered up the courage to look yet, yet you, you're you certain that eyes are fixed on you sleeping. Other times, you think if you just don't open your eyes, it will go away. I opened my eyes. She's so brave. In the corner closest no. to me stood no. a small child. No! <laughs> no! Visibly, visibly illuminated in the night of the room. By all accounts, it was a full-bodied apparition watching me. I can't explain how I knew that this entity was a boy, but I knew. He looked nothing like any of the other boys that I played with in our neighborhood. His appearance was something I'd never seen before that night. When the spirit looked at me, he conveyed utter desperation and sadness. His eyes were unusually large with a furrowed brow expression. Neither of us ever uttered a word and we were in a transfixed conversation. I don't know why, but I was more curious about his presence than I was alarmed. Because you were a child. Because you were a child, right. Perhaps it was an empathy for him that I felt. the world hasn't shit on you yet. (laughs) He seemed to beg for help, or perhaps he was pleading with me to forgive what was inevitably going to happen next. I only wish that I would have woken my mother. Without warning, a sinister-looking figure stepped out of the dark abyss, but this time I was instantly terrified by his presence and his expression towards me. He was a tall, skeleton man that illuminated enough to see every feature of his hideous face. Oh my his God. bulging eyes were blue, and his face was distorted by pure evil. He had an insidious grin that widened with each beat of my racing heart. I gasped but couldn't scream. His animated delight was evident as he watched my terror. terror. Oh, my God. God. Horror and terror is horror. Horror. <laughs> I took a glimpse at the corner of the boy's spirit, but he was gone. I knew that my torment had only begun. The evil demon intently watched me struggle, but I couldn't move a muscle. My tiny body was paralyzed by fear. His toothy grin shined bigger and brighter in the darkness. Once he was confident that he had my attention, he turned his gaze towards my cabinet, then back at me. With slow, strobe-like movements, he stepped towards the cabinet. His hideous face looked in my direction. Once more, before he reached inside the cabinet, he found what he wanted. (gasps) Held in his hand, in his bony hand, were my scissors. Oh, my God. Clipping the void as he strode towards me. (gasps) Snip, snip. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop it. I do not like this. I was able to scream. I scurried under the blanket and over my mother's body, screaming hysterically. My poor, poor mother had no idea what was happening to me. She called my name over and over, but I wouldn't budge from beneath the covers. I huddled next to her body while I sobbed and screamed between cries. I carelessly thought the enough, that enough time had passed, so the monster had to be gone. How foolish I was. <gasps> I lifted it's just enough there? of the blanket to peer my small face out for a peek, and those disgusting ethereal eyes were waiting with a continuous <gasps> snip snap of the scissors. I covered my face again and started to choke. I couldn't catch air between the screaming and crying. Oh, the the hyperventilating old yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My mother jumped out of bed, turned on the light, and panicked, believing that I needed a doctor. By this time, everyone in the house was awake. My grandmother and sister came rushing in to check on me. Their confused expressions were almost too much to bear because I had never displayed any kind of behavior like that in my life. My mother checked me over as she held me tightly to comfort me. Once everyone was satisfied that it wasn't a medical emergency, I was able to go to grandma's room and my sister got into bed with her mother. The next morning, I crept into my mother's room looking for my shoes. I was cautious of every step I took while my face started around the room watching for the ugly creature to appear again. I figured with the daylight, the monster must be gone. As I rounded the foot of the bed, I crept over to where I had left my shoes, but they were not there. So I stepped over to the other side and gasped. My scissors were lying on the floor exactly where the demon had dropped them. I proved that everything that happened that night before (gasps) was real. I never slept in my mother's room again. I'd never sleep again. I never yeah, sleep. No shit. Oh 1970, the suspended, 
The suspended overhanging entrance crashed to the ground during an earthquake and the house was condemned by the city thereafter. 1971, we moved into another house that our mother purchased. 1972, the house was eventually demolished and the debris was removed, all except the cement porch. 1987, the cement porch was finally removed. It served as a constant reminder of the horror I witnessed back in 1964, which, by the way, five. Yeah. Yes, yeah. less than five, five years depending on, on the year, yeah. uh, time the of year, because she was born year. in October. Mm-hmm. Every time I drove by that address... Uh, so it served as a constant reminder of the horror I witnessed back in 1964 every time I drove by that address. Conclusion, wherever a hor- horrific crime was committed or a tra- tragic death had occurred, a haunting can follow. I strongly believe that this was a case of child abduction and murder. I believe that the malevolent en- entity was once human who had previously occupied our house. I believe that the man had abducted the child and performed unspeakable acts on him prior to murdering him. The child may have been a neighbor or a runaway or a farmhand, but he was likely a relative. My heart aches for the child's entity because I believe that he has been held captive in that darkness for all these years. What I regret most from my encounter, since the house was demolished and replaced by another structure, there's no way to release the poor child's spirit to give him peace he deserves. This will forevermore haunt my memory. Oh my God. Creepy. But That's maybe maybe there are ways that somebody could go in. And, That's what I was thinking. You know, just I don't know, but maybe there are ways that that could be done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Worth checking into. Not for her necessarily. It's not her responsibility, yeah. but yeah. It'd be nice if somebody could. Yeah. Well, thank you, okay. Tony. So before you start, just want to reiterate, uh, Tony is going to be the... Uh, she's going to be coming on the show and she mm-hmm. has, she's the one that uh, I found on Twitter slash X, whatever. And she, when I looked at her profile, she said she was a paranormal, uh, no, a haunted house survivor. Mm-hmm. So I, I sent her a message and I'm like, I bet you have stories. And yeah. she said, I sure do. And so she didn't she's going to come on and tell her, mm-hmm. st- her some more stories. Awesome. Great. Yeah. During the daytime. <laughs> maybe we'll do it oh no we're doing it at uh 6 p.m yeah <laughs> okay all right all right again take it away this is from patron lynn so this is her story and just like ap i am doing this cold i don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> <clears throat> i do have some experiences i can share with you so i'll relate what happened to you then you can decide if you'd like to mention it yes yes we would like to <laughs> yes. check Uh, I do have odd experiences, and I've had clairvoyant dreams for years. So here we go. January 2nd, 2020, around 7.20 p.m. I know the time and date because I'd had a phone call telling me that my mother had passed away Mm. after a long, long time dealing with Alzheimer's disease, nearly 10 years. Mm. I'm really sorry for your loss. That's a long time. that's, That's a long time. That's awful. After having a regretful mix of... After having... A regretful mix with sadness and relief cry she'd suffered for so long, which is, that's an understandable yeah. feel. Those are understandable feelings. For sure. My wife, Liz, and I sat looking at each other, quietly talking and trying to be grown up because, of course, arrangements then have to be made, decisions, etc. Then the phone calls to friends and family. You know how you just need to sit quietly because suddenly you've lost both parents and it's all down to you now. Hmm, when in front of me, about three feet away, a small figure walked from my right through the wall across my path. It was small, I'd say about two to three feet. It appeared to be dark in the middle, but around the edges, it was misty and blurred. It was walking or floating towards the left hand living room wall. I wasn't afraid, I wasn't goosebumpy. It stopped and looked back from where it had come from, and I got the feeling it was impatient and trying to get something else to move faster. Another figure came along the same route, but slower. This figure seemed to be wrapped in something. Yes, it moved slower. It was small, dark in the center, and misty around the edges. They both walked to the left-hand wall. Not together, the first figure led. The figures were both short, small like a mist, but more solid in the middle. As this was happening, I looked up at Liz. She smiled at me, so I assumed she'd seen it too. The whole thing was calm, not scary, just odd. 
I think that's all. This is the first time I've told this. I asked Liz, did you see that? No, she hadn't. My feeling was that this thing was leading my mother's spirit. Oh, my God. I love that. How long had was it prior that her father had passed? It doesn't say. Okay. That's what um, I was thinking, too. Because it, like it I reminds said, me of my my grandparents on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, like I said, I wasn't at all afraid or spooked. The place mm-hmm. in the wall that they came from is always cold. Any ideas or suggestions would be welcome. Yeah, it could be your father or it could be just something. Or you somebody know, else who's passed in the family else. or a friend of hers or yeah. anybody that was mm-hmm. leading her. Or maybe her. one of your mother's spirit guides mm-hmm. leading yeah. her. Sure. Uh, I, where is Lynn from? They're Are in they, Wales. Okay. I was going to say because she spelled center very British. Yeah. T-R-E-N and favorite. T-R-E, yep. with oh, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that just reminds me, like when my grandma uh, on my dad's side passed, just before she passed, she had a dream about my grandpa getting the other lawn chair out of the garage. And yeah, you said of, that. It's kind of the joke of like, he was always getting something out of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was getting the other lawn chair out. Just uh, getting ready for waiting her. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. And they, well, they were he waited for everyone to leave his side and she waited for all of her kids to get there. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It sounds like it was probably something coming for your mom's spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. what I think, it's... especially because you said you weren't afraid or mm-hmm. you and know, calm and mm-hmm. very calm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Liz smiled at you. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whether Liz saw it or not, it was, it may have been just your mom briefly passing and showing Liz mm-hmm. or using Liz to say we're As okay to say I'm yeah okay. yeah yeah I like Sorry, that Liz. <laughs> yeah that was a re- I like that story mm-hmm. Tony not yours I don't like that one <laughs> I, like I that. do I don't like did that I, it's did true. I do a good job reading Tony's you did, you did a great job Fuck you yeah I'm fine <laughs> I'm fine I'm fine it's fine everything's, everything's fine. fine I'm gonna You're put fine. Hallmark on I'm gonna turn every light in the basement on I want to go finish the Norwegian one, but now I'm probably going to, Greg's going to come join me and we'll probably watch something else. I'm going to go watch Survivor. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good. Yep. So well, thank um, you, everybody. Yes. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And um, I thought yeah. I typed in what next time we'll be doing, but yeah, probably. I think I did it and then I deleted it because I well, didn't probably because you weren't sure. Weren't sure yet. It's either it could be really an sure. interview with Tony. It could be yeah. an interview with Kaylee. It could be another Dead Files episode. So you're just going to yep. have to tune in and find out. That's yeah. right. We just don't know. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Activity Continues podcast. We really appreciate you giving us your ears for a bit. Please reach out if you have a spooky story you'd like us to share on the show. We can be reached at theactivitycontinues at gmail.com or through our website or any of our socials. Links are all in the description of the show. Please feel free to drop us a note and say hi. And join us next time when the activity continues. The Activity Continues is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media and is part of the independent Collected Sounds Podcast Network. We are also proud members of the Boo Pod Network of Super Cool Podcasts. Nailed it. <laughs>